A um, couple of months ago, when um, Rochelle first told me that I would be speaking today, um, we kind of had a little talk before that, and I immediately knew that I wanted to talk about synchronicity, and because I was starting to gain an understanding of what it is. Now, if you talk to anybody about synchronicity, they're like, you know, most people are like, well, what is that? And so I was like, well, I'm going to get together some definitions and things and explain what synchronicity really is. Now, since a lot of people don't know what it is, and I think I found out why. The definition in the dictionary, in Wikipedia, and in the like, philosophy books, and all those books, they're all different, and they make you think there's something like, I don't know, I don't know what it is. So, um, like, it, it's basically um, meaningful coincidences. So you kind of, you know, you go through life, and you see those coincidences, and you're like, wow, that was weird. Or you, you see somebody that you were thinking about, you know, a couple of days ago, and you see them at the grocery store, and you think, wow, I was just thinking about her, or they call, or things like that. So, so um, it's like connecting the dots, like the individual circumstance or individual is a dot, and um, to practice synchronicity, you kind of connect the dots. And, and um, you do this how, however it works for you. You know, you do it in your quiet time, or you can just kind of watch how it happens throughout the day, and then think about it later, um, kind of thing. So two months ago, she, she tells me, you're going to do a talk. And so I'm like, OK, synchronicity is what I'm going to do. So I decided to kind of um, wait until about May to decide to put together the talk. And I started seeing things coming in um, through books and through other people talking to me. and. Um, just basically about the speech and how synchronicity works and, and you know, also personal things and ways to help people. And um, so I was going through um, April and then May started and I decided to stop setting daily goals for myself, stop crunching my time, to stop saying I'm going to do this at 2 o'clock, this at 3 o'clock, and just do whatever comes to me throughout the day. Now, if I had something that I knew needed to be done, I'd write it down and make sure, you know, I'd look later and see if I got it done. And invariably, if I just trusted that it would happen, it got done. And so I started doing this, and I decided to really try to focus on this May 1st. So, um, and then, so throughout May, Sharon speaks, and um, it was a lovely, lovely talk, and I, I was listening to it going, oh man, I can use a lot of this for the talk. And, um, so I wrote all that down while she was talking. Immediately after service, got a book from her. It was called Busting Loose. And it's about basically second half of life kind of thing, not living in the life that we know that is all about meeting deadlines and, and bottom do dollar profits. It was kind of a business book mixed with spirituality. And one of his biggest thing was, and he's like, you're not going to believe me, but it's true, is let go of time and let go of money. Because, and I'm paraphrasing, but managing time and managing money is a form of lack because if you manage it, that means you only have so much. And so I took that and I was like, okay, I know, I only have so much money, but I'm going to try it. And slowly and as much as I could allow, it was, it was working. Like I didn't, I didn't look at the bank and everything fell, fell um, short. And we actually had more money than I thought in my head. So I was like, okay, that's good. And with the time, I can do so much more because I'm open and it just happens in an order that, that I can't even conceive that the order works. So, you know, the things that I might have thought was like, I can do these 10 things, I can do 12 because the order, the order is just, it, God has a different order for us. The universe has a different order. So um, after I read, read Sharon's book and then um, I passed that on, um, last week, Brandon Nagel was talking. Was that last week? Yes. And I was really excited about his talk, and he, you know, he talked about some things, and there was more stuff. He talked about stuff about the subconscious mind, and I was like, oh, wow, I can use, a, use some of that in my talk, too, you know? And so I was taking notes again, and, and, um, and, and I went immediately home. That was the time I had um, set aside to start planning for this talk, was right as soon as I got home. And I went home, and the day before, I'd had this really weird dream. I was taking a nap in the afternoon, and I woke up, and I was sweating, and I was panting. I was like... What, what does this mean? I have no idea. I can't, I, I, could, I could barely even remember it. But I mean, it was the feeling. So I, I went online and I just looked up dreams. And um, I found a paper immediately that um, was comparing dream study research between Charles Fillmore, the founder of Unity, and Carl Jung, 
the psychologist who started with synchronicity. Now this, is, this, this was an area I hadn't really explored, Carl Jung, I had not done that yet. And I'd seen his name all over the place in things that I've researched and studied. And so I was like, okay, I'll bite. <laughs> so I, so there's, like, there's like five or six YouTube clips, about four or five minutes a piece. I've read, I listened to the first one on synchronicity and I was like, I'm using that in the talk. I'm gonna show him the, the clip and everything. I was like, yes. So then I started listening to that. And, um, and then um, right after that, I, went, I read the last chapter of a book that I had been reading called Richard Rohr, or is by a guy named Richard Rohr, who's a Catholic priest. And, um, and in, the, in the last chapter, for whatever reason I saved the last chapter, it talked about mirror neurons. I have no idea what mirror neurons are, but last week Brandon told us what mirror neurons are. They're the little receptors in your brain that fire when something emotional happens. So for example, if you're watching TV, guy breaks his leg and you go, oh, you're, you're the mirror neurons make it seem like you broke your leg. That's the way they, that's the way they record it in your subconscious mind. So I was like, wow, that's, that's really cool. Because I mean, the way the book was, it just kind of passed over it. So I was like, all right, this is, this is really cool. So I started, so I started preparing the talk and it was kind of falling in order pretty easily. And I was like, okay, I don't need to worry about it. You know, I'll just do what I was doing in May, keep, let it go, you know? So I waited till Wednesday. Then I put it into a PowerPoint. I was gonna show, you know, I was gonna show Carl Jung. I was gonna show you guys all these different definitions and everything. And, and I had all these planned out stories and, and I was like, okay, this is good. I'm gonna go to bed. And I'll work on it tomorrow, Friday and Saturday. Thursday, I just went with it, too busy. Friday, too busy. And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> so Saturday comes, I had to work, six to three. And um, I get off at three o'clock and we had a um, going away party to go to at, at the in-laws at Nat Natalie's parents' house. Now, you know, everybody always thinks, well, the in-laws, that's, you know, everybody's in-laws are a pain or whatever, but it's not like that. It's when, when there's a party over at the Phillips house, it's, it's always, it's how everybody always has a good time. It's always really, you know, elaborately planned out. And, um, but all the people are, um, that generally hang around longer are um, in my, they're intimidating to me because they're just, you know, they're successful people. They're, um, they're people who um, have, have done a lot and um, they're kind of people that you would, you know, look up to but not know how to, I suppose. So, so it always makes me nervous to hang around their house. And that's, and it's, it's just a personal, th it's just a personal thing. So, um, so I went into this, so uh, he's probably like, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so I went into this and I was like, it's okay, you're gonna have a good time, we'll just watch what happens. So I go into the party, you know, I go walk into the party and, um, and I meet a couple people and I eat and, um, and I just look around and I'm like, I don't see anything here for me, you know. But then I started talking to people and, um, and after a couple hours I was standing in the front I was like, I think I'm gonna go work on my speech. I was telling Natalie, I think I'm gonna go work on my speech. She's like, okay, okay. And then um, I was like, but something's telling me to stay. And so I went and looked outside and I was looking around and people are just talking about, you know, mostly just typical things people talk about, surface level stuff, you know. I'm looking around and say, so, okay, I'm leaving. So I walk out and then somebody stopped me. And it, I had yet to speak of me speaking here today. And they just you know, said something, and out of nowhere, I was just like, well, I'm giving a talk tomorrow, and I'm going home. And they, on what? And so I said, on synchronicity. Well, what's that? And I was like, okay. <laughs> Here we go. So I started talking with, um, his, name, his name is um, Jeff. It's one of, one of Daryl's good friends. I started talking with him about it. I started telling him about how, how it came about. Because he's like, well, how did this start for you? I was like, well, it started, you know, I started studying self-help stuff to get better at sales. And then I started looking into all different kinds of things, just opening up my mind to things that I had closed before, not necessarily to believe it, but just to understand it. I mean, like it had been presented to me, so I wanted to see how it, how it all came together. I said, so I just started studying all these things, and, and, um, and I came to a point where I read a book, it wound up being a series called The Celestine Prophecy, and he talks about nine insights of, um, of life. But the main thing that I took from that was that if you're on a mission, whether it be just a daily mission, an hourly mission, or a life mission, that circumstances set up for you. 
And I was really taken by that, and so I started paying attention. And I was telling, you know, telling Jeff this, and then someone else jumped in, and they were all like, oh yeah, man, I see that all the time. And, and so it was pretty exciting to be able to tell people about connecting the dots, and they were, you know, in their own, in their own minds and lives, they were, they were starting to look at it and see it. And um, so then someone else jumped in, and the conversations kept going for about another hour. And then I was led outside, and I came to, um, and, I, and um, I was standing by myself for a little while, just looking around. The music was really good, and I was like, this is cool, you know? This is a really good party. I'm having a really good time. And I was looking around, and everybody else was having a good time. And I wasn't drinking. A lot of people were. And so we were all having, you know, good time in, in, in different kinds of ways. But, I mean, I was looking at them, and I used to drink heavily, so I could have easily been like, oh, yeah, they're just drinking, and, you know, I could have you know, poo-pooed it or whatever. But I was like, no, no, that's, that's, just, that's just their outlet for having a good time. So um, I come around, and there was one person in the party that um, I was supposed to meet, I suppose. Like, she had wanted to meet me, but she wasn't feeling well or whatever it was. She was taking a nap. And um, so on my way out, I finally got to meet her. And this is um, a very special person in Natalie's life. And her, it's um, one of her mom's really good friends. Um, her name is Nora. And she's into um, spiritual teaching and things like that. But we got to talking about it, and we got to talking about it, and how, how wonderful it is to have conversations with people when you're, when you're on kind of a, um, you know, I guess a different level. And she was talking about how there's vibration in food. And so um, her, her thing is she, she eats organic food because the vibration level is higher. It has to do with how it's grown. It's grown with love to be as simple as possible, and it's grown fuller on, on, the, you know, on the, uh, the vines or out of the ground. And um, I work in, you know, commercial produce, so I know that they pull that stuff really early. You know, I mean, it, it, is, it is all about looking good on the shelf, whereas, you know, the organic stuff typically is, is about your nutrition. So we were talking about that, and um, I was telling her that I was going to speak today, and, she, she, and then we started talking about synchronicity. And, uh, and she says, and then the conversation stopped after we talked about synchronicity for a little while, and she was, she was kind of like telling me how she, you know, had all these um, things happen, like how she met Natalie and stuff like that. And, um, and I brought it up again. I was like, I'm sorry, I just brought that up again that I was speaking again. She goes, that's okay. You probably need to get something out of it. And I was like, yeah. She's like, well, are you ready? And I said, well, that was the thing. I was debating on whether or not I'm going to go home and prepare. And she's like, what do you need to prepare for? And I said, well, you know, I got to get it all in order to make sure I deliver it okay. And I was like, get the video ready. And she goes, you're already prepared. She said, if you were going to speak on this and, um, and you already sound excited to me talking, she's like, that's the whole thing about faith and doing what you're going to speak on is going out there and, um, and doing it based on faith that you will be given the words to say. And I was like... I mean, I'm sweating right now, you know, um, and, and I was like, I don't know. She's like, you, you have to do it sometime. And so, um, so here I am out on the ledge without any <laughs> notes. I had to throw them away one by one today, the last ones that were left in the car. Um, but I thought the one thing that made me do it was how, how much I ran into at the party and like, why is this important? Well, it's, it's just an illustration that my whole purpose over the past week or month was to practice this um, and live it. And I lived it in not, I mean, I was trying to live it at work. It's a little harder to do at work sometimes, but um, I've been doing it. And then I did it in, in a place that I thought I might be uncomfortable because, you know, I had to come and speak. And then I went to the, to the party. And then, I mean, I was terrified of public speaking in high school. I mean, I'm just terrified. I'm with the paper like this, you know, and here I am given one without any paper. And it's, I mean, that was, that was my synchronistic part there. Now, there are ways you can kind of, I guess, extrapolate this over, um, over a bigger part of your life. And um, I use a couple of examples. One, um, how I met Natalie. Some of you guys know this story. Both of us were seemingly on really two different paths. I was on my way to Kansas City. She was coming in from Ohio. Both of us had just gone through troubled relationships of sort, and we both had just had enough. And we're just like, okay. You, you know, God, you know better. Um, these are the things I think I want in a person. Um, and, and we only know this because we told each other after we met. And these are things I want in a person. This is the kind of person that I want to meet and someone that I can just talk to and, and, um, and just be with. And so one day, me and Mark were up here 
given a talk. I don't even remember what it was about, but we, we were taking pictures that day, um, or we, no, we were doing our, um, what was it, the um, affirmations, or, or what is unity to us? We were doing that over there in the corner. Natalie must have come in, what is going on here? This is a, this is a cluster of ultimate proportions, because we, we didn't really plan much, but um, she sat there in the back, and it's easy to notice new people, you know, because there's usually only one or two. So she's sitting back there in the back, and, and she was all looking intent. And it, part of me was like, oh, man, I wish you'd have came on a time when we were actually giving a real sermon, because, <laughs> you know. But she was just sitting back there, and normally somebody else, you guys are really good about talking to new people. Everybody is. And so normally people go up and talk to her. And I was standing up there kind of doing stuff, and I was just watching to make sure, and nobody went and talked to Natalie. So I was like, must be mine to do. So I walked up and talked to her. And, I, and, um, and I, I wrote her down, name down in the book and didn't really think much of it. And about a week later, I get a text from her brother saying, did you meet a Natalie Phillips? I'm like, I meet a lot of people I don't know. Well, I, I was confused at first. And then he, um, he's like, well, that's my sister. I was like, really? So, you know, Natalie came back. We hung out more and more. And um, before I went to Kansas City, um, we decided to call and... We, we called and talked to each other, and before you know it, here we are. We got married, met here. Um, there's a lot of synchronistic events on the way, but I won't go into all those. But um, that was another that was another really powerful message in our own life. Um, I sometimes I look at um, I was pointing like my name's up there, but it's not. <laughs> um, I, I huh? Yeah, right. Um, I, you know, you grow up with a name and you wonder, you know, what, is there any importance to your name? I mean, I, I looked at it and my name is very biblical. It's um, Jeremiah Davidson, which would, you know, in those times would mean son of David. I don't know if it means anything, but to me it does. You know, like that's a very, I mean, if I believe in synchronicities everywhere else, I should believe that my name is very synchronistic as well. So I've tried to adopt using Jeremiah more often. Um, what I found is these things happen um, it started with music because I love music, and so I'd get a message. But mostly, if I was in a bad mood, a, a song would pick me up. Movies will, will provide a message for you. Like if you're a writer, um, a lot of times your message will come through movies. Um, um, other people are really good resources for this. Um, if you're looking, like it's easy, it's easy to even practice if you're looking for directions to go somewhere. And you go, and I mean, that's the whole gas station thing. You walk into a gas station and ask somebody. But most of the time, if you just trust that you're going to find it, that person shows up. And I'm not even kidding. It doesn't happen. And um, I, got, I got a really good story that happened a couple of days ago as well. Um, I was sitting at home. I was just talking to Natalie. And actually, I was going to practice the speech again. And I had a really urge. I love drinking Dr. Pepper. <laughs> and I drink it a lot, probably too much. But um, I was like, I'm going to go to the store. And... Um, I always have to clarify because I call the convenience store a store. I don't know if it's because I grew up in California, but that's a store to me. Dylan's Ray's, there, Dylan's or Ray's, or a grocery store. So I was going to a store. Well, there's a multitude of stores around, so I had to decide. So I sat in the car, I was like, well, which store should I go to? And I usually don't think this much about it. I usually just go. So I was like, all right, I'll go to that one. So I drove in the middle of town and went to a store that I usually don't go to. It's a little farther than some of the other ones. And I pulled up, and sure enough, Miss Rose was walking out of the door. This is Wednesday. And the only reason that that's a big deal is because it was raining and she had walked. So I was able to give Miss Rose a ride home just because I listened to where to go to, to the store for my own personal thing. And the universe had you know, converged and she was there. And those are the things that it just happens. And, um, it happens in like just little things like that. It happens if you have a mission. It, it's, it's a lot easier to understand synchronicity and connecting the dots of the overall picture if you actually, if you know where you're going in your life, that helps. If you don't, then you just kind of say, okay, God, take me wherever you want, and then you'll just go wherever. But if you happen to know that mission that is either, you know, if you feel it's personal or if you feel it came from God, which as time goes on, you realize that it all does. It all does come from, from God, even though it comes from within you. It's same, um, it's the same thing. It's just one of those things you have to realize. But um, the stuff, it just starts getting clearer. And um, I even found this week, like I had started to look into the animals that show up in your life. And I didn't know that there was any, like, like there's just animals on the road, you know. Sometimes they're alive, sometimes they're smashed in the middle of the road. And, you know, we eat animals. And I mean, that's how we grew up. Animals are just there for us to 
to do whatever with. And um, I, but I started like paying attention to the ones that, that show up and not just individually. I was like, I'm going to take not the individual dots of the animals and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to string them together. So this week I saw a raccoon first. And let me back up. I have a book that somebody recommended that I buy. It's called Animal Speak by Ted Andrews, and it talks about the symbology of each animal. Now, you have to kind of interpret it. It's not the same for everybody. But, um, but once, I, once I looked at first the raccoon, then I saw a snake on the Kanza, and those two were really contrasting, so it kind of confused me. Then I saw a blue, a blue jay, and these are all within three, four days. A blue jay, and then, then um, a crow cocking four times and then a turtle. But I put it all together and it was one big message. It had a lot to do with this talk and it had a lot to do with my future aspiration. And, and it was just like, it, it was all right there. And then, and then I started, and then all, everything else came through the messages right after that, through the messages that I was studying for this. It, was, it all just came together because I, because I opened my mind to see it all. And to me, standing here talking about animals giving you messages sounds a little crazy to me, but they, there's people in the back going, no, it ain't. <laughs> but, but it's not. I mean, it's, they, nature does communicate, and it's, it's, it's a really good thing. And, of course, you know, if we extrapolate that into the world, we can do really good things with the world. But um, it starts doing it in each of our own, our own lives. Um, there's an exercise that worked for me. It may work for you if, if you're not already looking for synchronicities, if you're not already doing this. But just um, try it. Just think. Sit down for a second and let everything, let everything else go. That's a, that's a huge part of it, too. You kind of just let all of your cares go for at least just a few seconds is all. You can grab them at any time. Um, but think of somebody, a thing, something you got to do. I don't know, anything. And just watch it come together. Just watch how it comes together. Just be mindful. Watch how it comes together. You know, if you're if you're doing a um, if you've got a business deal, just just pay attention to how it comes together without much effort on your part. If you watch it, I mean, it happens. I've, I've watched it at work. Watch it. Do you know if there's somebody you need to see? You know, I really wish I could talk to that person. They'll contact you. I've that's happened between me and Ron before. We've thought of each other, then one of us calls, and we have a really good conversation that one or both of us needed. Um, but, you know, if this is something that, that you're looking to do to improve your, um, your life or to get better in any area, it's, it's a practice that can be done every day. Um, I'm going to leave with one last story. And this, is, this was the first time, to be honest, that I really, truly let it go. Um, I was in New York. It was about three and a half years ago or so. And um, I, would write, I always went into the city to write. I was writing a book about my childhood. And, um, and so I got to see a lot of things. And I'd, I'd, I'd walk the blocks, and there's like 20, 25 blocks um, between the library and, um, and the culinary school where I used to uh, meet, meet Jen. You guys used to know. You guys, most of you guys knew who that was. Um, and, and so I'd, um, I'd, I'd write at the library. And then, but this one particular bit day, I was like, I'm going to take the bus down. It's 20 blocks. I was kind of tired or whatever. And so, but I got on the wrong bus. And you know how frustrating that can be in New York if you've ever been there. So I get on the wrong bus and I decide, okay. Another part of it is I was also blogging at the time for family and friends here. So I was telling people what New York was like. So I was always kind of looking for little things and, and things too. And I just started looking into like metaphysics and stuff. So I was looking for deeper things to talk about and, and, um, I was like, all right, well, maybe there's something here. So I get on the bus. After 30 minutes, I got off two blocks away. I went like this. <laughs> to third, to right, right in front of Madison Square Garden. So I had not gotten any closer to my destination, but there was more time elapsed. So I get off the bus, and I go, OK, show me, God. Show me where I'm supposed to go. So I walk down 7th Avenue, which I usually walk down 5th. So this is, a, this is an avenue I didn't know much about. I'm walking along from 34th on down to 20th. And I'm walking, walking, walking. I don't see really anything. A bunch of shops, you know, guys selling gold and backpacks and all the stuff you see in New York City. There's nothing. I was like, okay, well, I guess I just got on the wrong bus. So I started going, going down, down the street towards um, my destination. And, um, and about halfway down the street, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a half a block from where I'm supposed to be. I see a guy yelling. And he's like, Luke! And he was yelling at the top of his lungs, frantic. And in my mind, I was like, 
that guy's lost something super important. It's either a dog or a child, I don't know which. And I'm looking around going, this is not a place to lose either one of those. I mean, because the, the streets are busy like they always are. And he's running around, freaking out. And, and in my mind, I was like, man, I hope he finds his, what he's looking for. So I keep walking. And, um, and you know, his f frantic cries kind of disappeared behind the men working on the side of the road. There's some guys working in the road. And I get to a, and so I'm walking, and I'm across the street from where I'm supposed to be. And on the corner, there's a little boy on a scooter, and he's crying to this lady. And, this, and, and he's like, I can't find my dad. I can't find my dad. And so I, I was like, are you Luke? Yes. So I was like, oh, follow me. And I didn't, I mean, I didn't wait to see, you know, your dad's over there. I just said, follow me. And I took him just back in the direction because his dad wasn't on the street because I looked back. So we were just walking, 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 walking. And the boy's coming back on a scooter crying. And the other lady was following to make sure I wasn't somebody crazy, I think. <laughs> and, um, and from me to Austin, the dad walked out. And I was like, is this your son? Yes. Oh my God. And then of course, um, and so I turned around and I didn't, I just walked away. He didn't, he was so freaked out to see him. And, um, but it was like in that moment, it's like, you can just, you never know. You never know. And um, <laughs> the sad part was, is he kind of reprimanded his kid for being lost, but I figured that would, that would all blow over. But um, in, for me, that was, that was, it was one step in knowing that um, if you really do let it go, that it will come to you. It's not an easy thing to do, but God does work through you every day. God bless you.